Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Stocks just about snapping a two-day losing streak as Chair Powell sticks to script. Jean Bavan of BlackRock remaining bullish, writing this. We think upbeat risk appetite can broaden out beyond tech as more sectors adopt AI. More broadly, rising and volatile yields have not disrupted the push higher in developed market equities. That's consistent with our view. The mega forces such as AI are key drivers of returns now. John, I'm pleased to say, joins us now for more. John, we'll get to the stock market in just a moment. I just want your views on Chairman Powell yesterday. Given the economic data we've seen so far. Would you describe some of those data points as just bumps in the road in the same way the chairman has? Well, I think this is this is a long road. So um, uh, if I look at the, the first stretch of that road, I think it's a bump. So we think inflation is going to be showing progress towards two over the next few months. Uh, the Fed is data dependent. They're not forward looking. So they're going to be lured into uh, we've sold inflation. That's going to be the story. That's part of the reason why we are kind of uh, rip pro constructive on risk for now um and i think uh, i think that's going to be the story they'll cut the, this is a fed that is um boxed himself in december to be uh to to cut at some point this year some point soon i think the bar not to do that is pretty high i mean we can debate whether this is the right stance um but uh it is a stance so as a result um, a, a bit of progress on inflation will cut the narrative for them that uh, there's bumps and they'll they'll be in a position to cut so i think that's the story for the next few months, and that's why uh, risk assets are set to continue to perform. John, the story we've had over the last few days, really, is how to interpret the moves in bonds, the moves in commodities, with regards to equities. How are you interpreting those moves? Yeah, I think the, uh, well, the first point to make is uh, you, you, uh, we've, we very much believe we're in a new regime, right? So we're pro-risk right now. I think this has room to, uh, to continue, room to run. But it's, it's a very different environment. The idea that we're going back to uh, through immaculate dis disinflation to the great moderation of the pre-pandemic, I think, is, uh, is not happening. And I think when you look at the bond volatility that we're seeing, uh, it continues. Uh, that was clearly the case of 2023. But like even this week, massive, I think that's the biggest evidence we have that this is not, uh, you know, back to the old regime. Uh, so I think we're seeing... Um, you know, a lot of volatility macro narrative. It takes a little bit of info data to come in to lead to very significant reaction, as we've seen. And then, uh, lo and behold, uh, we're at the same point as we were like a week ago before the PCE in terms of uh, Fed expectations. The only thing that has really changed is long-term rates that are set uh, at a higher level now. So I think it speaks to this environment where we can very much see the Fed starting to cut but at the same time, uh, don't expect long-term rates to follow suit and, uh, and, and move down. I think we can very much see uh, you know, a Fed that starts to cut rates. It's going to be only a couple anyway. And then we're going to at the same time see rates that uh, are stable, long-term rates that are stable or even go higher from here. Which is the reason why you've been focusing on the short end of the yield curve. We had John Solfis earlier this morning on who said that, that stocks could continue to rally as long as 10-year Treasury yields didn't reach 6%. Do you agree with that, that if we had 10-year Treasury yields north of 10 percent, that would not be – north of 5 percent, excuse me – that that would not be a problem for equity valuations? Uh, no, I, 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 I wish that's the case, but I, um, I find it hard to, uh, to, uh, to relax about this. So uh, I think if we were really of the view that uh, we're going to 6 in the short order, like over the next year, 6 percent, 10 year – very difficult to see uh, equities that uh, sailed through this. So, uh, and we, I think we've seen some evidence of that. Right, the, go back to October of last uh, 2023, last year, uh, we went uh, north of five percent, and uh, that was a very different narrative. Felt very different. Um, so, I mean, over a course of 10 years, uh, we might reset to a higher rate environment and realize that we can uh, we can live with that. But I think uh, the, the the journey there will be one where equities will will uh, will feel more than bumpy. When people talk about a new regime, a lot of guests who've come on surveillance talk about their investments in the energy sector as well as just commodities in general, that any AI adoption has to come with hard uh, infrastructure investments that have not been fully accounted for. How much is BlackRock kind of adhering to that and really overweighting a host of commodities? So the, uh, the, there is a, a, a massive uh, restructuring of the economy that is happening. We think there's, a, there's AI is one big piece of it, but uh, we, we see five big mega forces. Uh, demographics is going to lead to a big change in spending pattern in developed economies. Uh, the rewiring of geop geopolitics means that we have a, a different uh, organization globally that uh, requires adjustment, infrastructure, 
Um, we have uh, the transition, the new transition, and we think finance is restructuring itself as well. So big, big trends. All of them uh, require adjustment, and these adjustments, I think, have to involve some kind of uh, very significant investment. I mean, if you only take the transition, the energy, the energy transition, that's by itself, uh, you know, a huge amount of investment. I think AI is in the middle and interacting with that. So, uh, yeah, I think infrastructure is a huge part of the, year, the story of the year to come. Uh, even if you don't have, like, very you know, bullish growth expectations, uh, we still need a lot of investment, infrastructure investment. So, um, and yes, that's going to support commodities. I think it's harder to draw a link to uh, this need for investment and what it's going to mean for commodities. I think it's a much more complex story, uh, but there is ultimately, uh, we're going to be drawing more on commodities as we, uh, as we uh, deliver on these investments. You mentioned this changing geopolitical map. We have the Secretary of the Treasury over in China, and, and she's talking about that they don't want to completely decouple from China. It's just about diversifying. Do you buy that? And if it was to be a decouple, how does that change your thesis? Well, I think decoupling, complete decoupling, is is uh, even 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 if that was the objective, is not realistic, right? I mean, we're we're intertwined in very fundamental ways globally, uh, and so um, you know, fully decoupling will will not will, will not even be on the table. So I think I don't see necessarily a lot of information in a comment like this, right? I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a a straw man that is unachievable. Uh, but there is a trend. I think the most important thing for me is that we are fragmenting. Uh, there is a there's a distanciation that is happening. Uh, the question is, how is it going to be navigated? But in the meantime, uh, aside from the politics and those trips, I think investors are uh, uh, investors and companies globally are adjusting and making plans that are accounting for the fact that the world will be uh, more fragmented than it was. And I think that's a big that's one of the big mega forces that is happening uh, and is affecting decision even as we speak. John, if that's the case, do I want to have a bias towards small caps away from multi -cap, multinational big caps? Uh, I mean, you could you could uh, eventually see uh, see that, that that logic playing out. I think for now we still think that uh, you know more from a tactical basis uh, that you would need to have a more conviction on a, on a, you know a growth spur that uh, is lasting more than a few months to start to broaden your views on small caps. I think that's going to be more of a story about the near-term growth than it is about fragmentation. But if you think on a ten-year basis, then I can very well see. Uh, you know, a story where you see more localized uh, companies, uh, smaller cap, small caps, uh, being beneficiaries of this uh, geopolitical megaforce. That's one to watch. John, you're one of the best, sir. Thank you. Jean Bavan there of BlackRock.